I like this group already. By the way, you are in luck tonight. We have a new contest. We're starting right here tonight in the studio audience. Now, let me tell you how this works. Sitting somewhere in our audience tonight is vice presidential nominee on the independent ticket. <laughs> Wait a minute. Patrick Lucy, and $100 goes to anybody who can point him out. <laughs> this is a live group tonight. Is that, is that your bus outside with a banner that says, uh, trees don't make smog, politicians do? <laughs> as you know, um, a lot of you from out of town tonight, right? Not out from California? All right. All this year, Los Angeles is celebrating their uh, 200th birthday, the Bicentennial. Did you do, you did a Bicentennial did. Minute? Two. Didn't you do a oh, yes, yes. Bicentennial Minute? Yes. I did a Bicentennial Minute. I did two. Oh, he did two. <laughs> what? No, I also. I did two. You, you made two of them, or you two did also? I made two minutes. How come? Well, you just asked me to do two of them, that's all. How many did you do? How many did they ask you to do? Three. Well, I'll tell you what, they could have asked you to done 12 because you're going to have plenty of time to do them. <laughs> anyway, I have a... Uh, I have another bicentennial minute for you tonight. On this day, 200 years ago today, famed pioneer Josiah Slauson... <laughs> That's right, Josiah Slauson tried to stop an Indian raid on Los Angeles by nailing spikes into the ground and putting up a sign that says, do not enter, severe hoof damage. <laughs> by the way, his scalp is on permanent display at the Chamber of Commerce. You know, I'm a little worried about tonight's monologue. Reverend Jerry Faldwell called me today and told me that God does not listen to the prayers of comedians. <laughs> so I don't know how this will go. But I promise this will be... I promise you that this will be a significant monologue because I, I asked Amy Carter today what she thought were the most... Amy, I said, Amy, what do you think are the most important issues to make jokes about? And she, she says, why don't you do a joke about the recent Titan missile thing that they had? Remember down in... You know, they didn't start an investigation today into the Titan missile accident. Remember when the silo blew up? Was that Arkansas or Alabama? Yeah. Arkansas, Arkansas, right? Did you know NBC picked up the rights to that? make a new military comedy, The Nukes of Hazard. <laughs> well, let's see. Five more days of campaigning before the election for independent John Anderson. He is, uh, he's trying a last-minute media blitz. And he's, he's really out of money, so what he's going to do is he's going to have himself stapled to Bob Hope. <laughs> John Anderson is so desperate for votes, he's changing his first name to Lonnie. Did you know that? <laughs> well, here it is, what, October? What's the date today? 30. October the 30th, and still no October surprise. That's what a lot of people thought was going to happen. I think maybe the big October surprise will be that Ronald Reagan will finally mention George Bush. <laughs> you don't hear much about that. Now, on the debate the other night, politicians are clever. Did you notice they love statistics? Statistics impress the public that listens. It sounds like the politician has a great command, all these facts and figures. And, of course, the other politician, uh, politician comes up with his own figures. But Ronald Reagan comes up with some strange statistics. Do you remember the one in the debate the other night? He said if all the unemployed people in the United States stood in a line, allowing two feet for each person, the line would stretch from New York to Los Angeles. He came up with another one today. <laughs> if everyone on welfare were chopped liver, <laughs> you could spread them on a line of Ritz crackers <laughs> from here to Bulgaria.
I don't think either one of the candidates made any major flaps in the debate the other, the other night. Reagan did get a little, um, create a little controversy because he said he remembers as a kid when he grew up, the country didn't even know it had a racial problem. Remember that? In fact, Reagan didn't know there was a social, a social problem until he saw Rochester and Butterfly McQueen eating in the back of the commissary at Warner Brothers. <laughs> First time he noticed that. I liked his debating style, though. Yeah, Reagan's very, uh, very much at ease, seems to be. He's kind of relaxed, laid back, easygoing. Compared to Carter, didn't you feel the president was a little... He looked very severe. I guess the word is uptight. As a matter of fact, Reagan turned to him during the debate. You may not have heard this. You had to really pay attention. Uh, I, I was listening very close. I happened to hear this because I wanted this joke. But Reagan turned to Carter during the debate and says, what's wrong with my favorite president? Haven't you tried Sanka coffee? Did you hear that? <laughs> there, uh, there was another setback in John Anderson's uh, campaign today. Rosalind Carter, yes, and Nancy Reagan had a Tupperware party. <laughs> and Kiki Anderson was not invited. She, she had to watch a film of the Tupperware party. <laughs> Five days away. We got to make a choice, right? And I think it's a clear-cut choice. Who do you want running our nation for the next four years? Nancy or Amy? <laughs> oh, speaking of politics, did you see who was in the news today? Former President Nixon is back in the news today. He appeared in court yesterday. Uh, yeah, concerning, I guess, the trial of two FBI agents who apparently had made some break-ins uh, some years ago, and uh, Nixon had to testify about the legality of those, uh, of those break-ins. Nixon wasn't taking any chances, though, by showing up in court. He had his own pardon in his pocket. <laughs> Nixon also predicted that Ronald Reagan would be the next president of the United States. But... You can't go by Nixon. He also predicted that Henry Kissinger would return to private practice. <laughs> Nixon never was funny. <laughs> the past couple of nights, we have been taking, which seems to be the, the thing the in this Carson country survey. to do. Well, the Carson poll. Everybody else takes a poll in this country, every newspaper, every major network. This is an intriguing election this year because I don't think there is one political expert, one journalist, uh, one commentator of any credentials that is, is making any projection as to who's going to win this presidential election. It is actually that close. Um, all the networks have made them. A lot of people are undecided. So we, the last two nights, have been taking our own poll. We have 500 people here in our studio audience, basically from all over the country. So we're going to show you our applause meter, which will register the reaction. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you each candidate. Now, this is just serious no, no joke so do not applaud for the person you would not vote for or don't don't boo or yell or anything just applaud and i'll give you the three candidates in alphabetical order along with the undecided but just applaud for the person if the election were held today you had to go to the polls for the president of the united states you can now you can see the applause meter in the screen right. mm -hmm. how many of you would vote for john anderson See, see, yelling, don't yell, because let's do it again, because yelling, you see, changes the meter. meter. Just, applaud. Just applaud. Now, let's do it again. How many for John Anderson? How many of you plan to vote for Jimmy Carter? How many of you plan to vote for Ronald Reagan? How many, how many of you are undecided? Well, according to, this is not a scientific survey, obviously. Uh, are, according, to, according to that reaction, there are more people undecided than there are of those voting for either Anderson or right. President Carter. And we've had about the same reading the last three nights, yeah, haven't we? It's amazing. Which, I don't know what it proves, but maybe our poll will turn out to be as accurate as the AP right. and the... Um, Lou Harris poll and, and the if, Gallup poll. If you folks at home would like to register your vote, call Johnny at home. <laughs> It costs 50 cents, but he'll accept the call. I left one out. How many of you would just as soon vote for the box boy at Ralph's?
we'll see what happens. Yeah. You saw the debate the other night. Yes. We've, uh, I'm so glad this election is coming up. I think we have all been over politics for, Somebody for quite a while. Somebody should start at a certain time way deep in the year, and that should be it. It goes on too long oh. because uh, by the time the campaign is over, each of the politicians has said about everything they have to say, and they've said it 15 different ways. They're so tired they can't serve. Did you notice, <laughs> did you notice the one? Watch the debates. I love the way they turn things around. Mm. They would ask them a question. What would you do? about the hostage situation in Iran. And whoever it is would say, I'm glad you asked that, Barbara, because as you know, my opponent has said, and they go right, right. turn it around, mm -hmm. and attack the opponent, and never, never get back to answer. the question whatsoever. And statistics are interesting. So what we did, we compiled, once you listen to politicians after a while, you're not sure what you're hearing. Yeah. It sounds wonderful, but if you really break it down and listen to it, um, then you can understand what they're really trying to say. So we've collected some samples of this year's campaign quotes and we've translated them into, so what they really mean? into basic, understandable English. So you know what the politician really means. Well, it's means. about time we did this. Well, it's about time, and we're going to do it now. Because if we don't, we're going to be about five minutes short on the show. <laughs> See, that's the reason we do these things. That's right. Most people don't understand. Yep. The reason we do this, yep. we got an hour. Done. And if we don't do this, it's uh, tap dancing Schneider's and whatever. five minutes early. Tom's got to sure. turn on the blow dryer a lot oh, earlier. Sure. This, this clarifies their statement. Right. Okay. When President Carter says, my vice president is the most capable and has the most responsibilities of any vice president in history, what he means is, who the hell's Mondale? <laughs> when former president Gerald Ford says, I fondly recall my White House years of presidential responsibility, making the important decisions that have helped to mold the destiny of our great nation, what Mr. Ford really means is, I don't remember a damn thing since I fell down the ramp of Air Force One. <laughs> before the presidential debate, when Nancy Reagan said, as always, I have the utmost confidence in my husband's ability to think on his feet and feel the difficult, difficult questions posed to him. What Mrs. Reagan really meant was, God, I hope he doesn't blow it again. 